Isaiah 40 verses 28 through 30, it says, Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We just thank you for your word, and we just ask that you would speak to us this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my name is Sandy Lynn Bober, and I am the Director of Children's Ministries at Hawthorne Gospel Church, for any of you who don't know me. And I thought it was rather fitting as the Director of Children's Ministries to have God is Gracious, because I am not only a mom, I'm a child, and I know with parenting, there is a lot of grace that needs to be extended. All of us, you know, make mistakes, but I feel like especially when you have children, your response to those mistakes, um, whether you have a gracious response to them um, or something opposite can really impact that young child. And so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about God's grace in our lives. And I'm gonna use a passage from Isaiah and talking to you. Uh, an acronym for grace, I'm sure you've heard this before, but G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. If you think about that, what it's saying is that because of Jesus Christ spilled blood on the cross, we are able to receive the riches that God has promised us, not because of ourselves. It's only at Christ's expense that we can receive those. And what I wanna to read to you today from the book of Isaiah um, is gonna be found in chapter 44. And I've been studying the book of Isaiah in my devotions. And what I've seen is that the first 39 chapters are really dismal. In fact, they're pretty hard to get through because it's full of God's judgment on the people for their disobedience. All of us are disobedient and the Israelites were no exception. They knew what was right. They knew what they were supposed to do. And yet they chose to not walk with God. And so the first 39 chapters are difficult because it's full of God's judgment on the people. And yet in chapter 40, it takes a turn and the next 27 chapters are full of God's promises on how he's going to restore the people. An interesting parallel that there are 39 books in the Old Testament and there are 27 books in the New Testament and the New Testament is all about Jesus Christ. So I like that little parallel there. Um, but what I wanna to read to you is in Isaiah 44 and I'm gonna read verses six through eight. It says, this is what the Lord says, Israel's King and Redeemer, the Lord Almighty, I am the first and I am the last. Apart from me, there is no God. Who then is like me? Let him proclaim it. Let him declare and lay out before me what has happened since I established my ancient people and what is yet to come. Yes, let them foretell what will come. Do not tremble, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim this and foretell it long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any God besides me? No, there is no other rock. I know not one. A little further in verses 21 through 23, it says, Remember these things, Jacob, for you, Israel, are my servant. I have made you. You are my servant, Israel. I will not forget you. I have swept away your offenses like a cloud, your sins like the morning mists. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing for joy, you heavens, for the Lord has done this. Shout aloud, you earth beneath. Burst into song, you mountains, and forests, and all your trees. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob. He displays his glory in Israel. God is gracious. God knows that we're going to make mistakes. God knows our heart. And yet, what he wants to do is he wants to extend his forgiveness. He wants to extend uh, that grace to you. He doesn't want you to stay in that spot of brokenness. He wants you to realize that through Christ's spilled blood on the cross, there is forgiveness of sins. Not only that, but you don't have to remember those sins. You can walk away from them. You can be redeemed from them and live a new life. And that is the promise that's in Isaiah, is that the people had chosen to walk away from the Lord, and yet there was that promise that there was going to be a Redeemer coming, and that was Jesus Christ. If you look through uh, the New Testament, 
And if you look through the letters that are written, most of them start off with grace and peace. We are to be gracious. We are to be peaceful. And so when you offer grace to someone, what you're doing is you're exemplifying the character of Jesus Christ. Christ is gracious. If you think about that in a tangible way, to offer grace to someone, it's difficult because it really requires a lot of humility on your part. It requires putting your own agenda, your own um, opinions maybe to the back and being gracious and extending love and compassion and forgiveness to someone else. But that would be my challenge for you today is to think about how you could exemplify Christ with your behavior and how you could be gracious towards others. Practice being humble today. I'm challenging myself with that too. Practice being humble today. And if you're a person who just feels like God hasn't forgiven you or God can't forgive you from something that you're currently caught up in, can I challenge you to realize that Jesus Christ is the redeemer he has come to set you free and to give you new life. God is gracious, no matter what it is that you're dealing with. He is gracious. He has forgiven you, and he wants you to have a new life in him. Be challenged today, uh, and I just want to close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, God, for your promises. We thank you, Lord, that you are gracious to us that you are slow to anger, that you are full of compassion. And so we just ask God that you would be with us today. Help us to be a light for your kingdom, we pray in Jesus' name. And I just wanted to read one verse um, or two verses in closing. It's Psalm 145, verses 8 and 9. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. Amen. Have a great day.